load balancers distribute incoming network traffic across multiple servers to ensure no single server bears too much load. By spreading the requests effectively, they increase the capacity and reliability of applications. Here are some common strategies and algorithms used in load balancing. First one is round robin, which is the simplest form of load balancing, where each server in the pool gets a request in sequential rotating order. When the last server is reached, it loops back to the first one. This type works well for servers with similar specifications and when the load is uniformly distributable. Next one is list connections algorithm, which directs traffic to the server with the fewest active connections. It's ideal for longer tasks or when the server load is not evenly distributed. Next we have the least response time algorithm, which chooses the server with the lowest response time and fewest active connections. This is effective when the goal is to provide the fastest response to requests. Next the algorithm is IP hashing, which determines which server receives the request based on the hash of the client's IP address. This ensures a client consistently connects to the same server and it's useful for session persistence in applications where it's important that the client consistently connects to the same server. The variants of these methods can also be weighted, which brings us to the weighted algorithms. For example, in weighted round robin or weighted list connections, servers are assigned weights typically based on their capacity or performance metrics, and the servers which are more capable handle the most requests. This is effective when the servers in the pool have different capabilities, like different CPU or different RAMs. We also have geographical algorithms, which direct requests to the server geographically closest to the user or based on specific regional requirements. This is useful for global services where latency reduction is priority. And the next common algorithm is consistent hashing, which uses a hash function to distribute data across various nodes Imagine a hash space that forms a circle where the end wraps around to the beginning, often referred to as a hash ring. And both the nodes and the data, like keys or stored values, are hashed onto this ring. This makes sure that the client consistently connects to the same server every time. An essential feature of load balancers is continuous health checking of servers to ensure traffic is only directed to servers that are online and responsive. If a server fails, the load balancer will stop sending traffic to it until it is back online. And load balancers can be in different forms, including hardware applications, software solutions, and cloud-based services. Some of the popular hardware load balancers are F5 Big IP, which is a widely used hardware load balancer known for its high performance and extensive feature set. It offers local traffic management, global server load balancing, and application security. Another example is Citrix, formerly known as Netscaler, which provides load balancing, content switching, and application acceleration. Some popular software load balancers are AJ Proxy, which is a popular open source software load balancer and proxy server for TCP and HTTP based applications. And of course Nginx, which is often used as a web server, but it also functions as a load balancer and reverse proxy for HTTP and other network protocols. And some popular cloud-based load balancers are AWS's Elastic Load Balancing or Microsoft Azure Load Balancer or Google Cloud's Load Balancer. There are even some virtual load balancers like VMware's Advanced Load Balancer which offers a software-defined application delivery controller that can be deployed on-premises or in the cloud. Now let's see what happens when a load balancer goes down. When the load balancer goes down, it can impact the whole availability and performance of the application or services it manages. It's basically a single point of failure, and in case it goes down, all of the servers become unavailable for the clients. To avoid or minimize the impact of a load balancer failure, we have several strategies which can be employed. First one is implementing a redundant load balancing by using more than one load balancer, often in pairs, which is a common approach. If one of them fails, the other one takes over, which is a method known as a failover. Next strategy is to continuously monitor and do health checks of load balancer itself. This can ensure that any issues are detected early and can be addressed before causing significant disruption. 
We can also implement auto-scaling and self-healing systems. Some modern infrastructures are designed to automatically detect the failure of load balancer and replace it with a new instance without manual intervention. And in some configurations, DNS failover can reroute traffic away from an IP address that is no longer accepting connections, like a failed load balancer, to a pre-configured standby IP, which is our new load balancer. If you'd like to see how load balancers are implemented in a real production app, I recommend you check out this video about production application architectures.